Come on, help me sing thou Bless Rock of
rock of ages. Now everybody, as you know how to pray, I want you to pray. As we put this service to God, everything that is to be said and done, that God will move amongst us today. That God will bless somebody, heal somebody, deliver somebody. Heavenly Father, we approach your throne as humbly as we know how. We thank you because you are the almighty God. We thank you, Heavenly Father, because there is none like you. Besides you, there is no other. And so we come to you, Father, with our hearts and our heads bowed. Father, we know that we did not put ourselves to sleep this morning and we sure didn't wake ourselves up. So we recognize you in every area of our lives. We thank you, Father, because you have provided everything that we need. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have put food on our tables, given us shelter, given us clothing. And we are grateful, Father. We thank you for family and we thank you for friends. And Father, even now as we are in your house, Heavenly Father, we bring before you the sick, those who are struggling with health issues, Father, challenges, Father, in their bodies, Father, challenges in their minds, challenges all around them, Father. But you, O oh God, are the great deliverer. You, O oh God, are the great healer. And so we come to you in faith today. We come to you believing, oh God, that whatever we ask in your name, that you will do. So Heavenly Father, we pray right now that you will heal the sick. Oh God, you will deliver the downcast. Oh God, you'll provide for those that don't have, oh God. You'll provide, oh Father, food, Father, shelter, clothing, whatever we're in need of according to your will. Father, for the service that is ahead of us, Oh God, that you will move in this service. Oh God, let your will be done. That the songs of Zion will go up and please you, Father. That the music will be together. Oh Father, the singing will be together. The word that will come forth will come from your throne room, oh God. That some soul today will be blessed. Someone who does not know you as their personal Savior, Father, will give up, oh Father, what they are doing and give their hearts and their lives to you. We give you thanks, Heavenly Father, because everything is in your hands. Father, we know, oh God, that without you we are nothing and can do nothing. So, Heavenly Father, I pray right now, oh God, that as we move forward in this service, Father, we will follow your leading that your name be glorified in every situation be with your people who are here those people who are not here those on their way coming that you'll bring them safely oh god that you oh god father will be in every one of our testimonies because father you did not have to do it but we are so glad that you did bless us one bless us all collectively and individually giving you thanks always these mercies we pray and ask in no other name but your name the lord jesus we give you thanks in jesus name and let the church say amen, amen. say amen again amen. come on hiding in thee hiding in me thou bless rock of ages
the blood.
to our pastor, Minister Clovet, and Mother Simmons, and all the mothers of the church and everybody. Today we're going to read Isaiah 55, from 1 to 13. Ho, everyone that thirsted, come ye to the waters, and he that have no money, come ye, bring and eat, yea, Come by wine and milk, without money and without price. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfies not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear, and come unto me, Hear, and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. 
Behold, I have given for a witness to the people, a lender and a commandment to the people. Behold, that I shall call a nation that knoweth not, and nations that know not. They shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God, and for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man has thoughts, and let him turn into the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he would abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and return not thither, but the waters that but the waters the earth and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word that gotten forth goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the things whereto. I have sent it. For ye, for ye shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you unto singing, and all the trees fields shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree, instead of the briar shall come up to the myrtle tree, and it shall be to the Lord for a name for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. The word of the Lord is always blessed. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord, everybody, as we start to prepare for offering. It's been a tough week, but we praise God anyway. Amen. Amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Blessed Holy Ghost, we welcome you. Come with power and fill this temple. Blessed Holy Ghost, we welcome you. Welcome, welcome.
I'm just going to pray over the offering. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for today, Lord. We thank you for waking us up, Lord, and starting us on our way. We pray and we give this offering unto you, Lord, because, Lord, it's not what we think you should have. It's what you should have. We pray that you will bless people abundantly, Lord, and go before us in the week. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So I was... I say searching for songs. I was praying to the Lord to guide me on sort of what songs to sing this Sunday. And one really um, spoke volumes to me and that was Jaira, You Were Enough. Because it's, it's a song very close to my heart and the Lord, yeah, he guided me on this one. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> if he dresses in lilies, with beauty and splendor, how much more will he clothe you? How much more will he clothe you? If he watches over every sparrow, how much more will he clothe you? How much more will he clothe if he, if he dresses a lid in beauty? How much more will he clothe you? How much more will he clothe you? Yeah, if he wants.
This is your moment. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let your praise be personal. Amen. Let your praise be personal. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. He'll meet you right where you are. In the name of Jesus, he'll meet you right where you are. Hallelujah, Jesus. He'll meet you right where you are. Hallelujah, Jesus. It doesn't matter what you've done. He will meet you right where you are. Hallelujah. He'll meet you right where you are, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, this is your personal moment. Doesn't matter who's looking. It doesn't matter. No one's staring at you. No one's looking at you. Praise him. No one's looking at you. Hallelujah. He is enough. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We love you. 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 If you don't know what to say, you never prayed before. We love you, Lord. We love you. I love you, Lord. I love you. That's all it needs. I love you, Lord. I love you, I love you, Lord, I love you, I love you, Lord, I love you, I love you, we love you, I love you, Lord, I love you, oh, I love you, I love you, Lord, I love you, I love you, Lord, I love you. is your time hallelujah Jesus this is your time hallelujah Jesus this is your time hallelujah Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus
vagina provide You are my provider You are more
Come on, help me sing how how great thou art. How great thou art, how great thou art. Sister Hannah, thank you, singers and everyone, the musicians, technicians, and everyone who is here in the house. God is worthy to be praised. And what I don't want us to get into the habit of is just having a song service, but that we give God worship. We give Him praise. And so even as the Spirit of God is moving, and I know that we are run by time, but it would be a shame that we come here and we don't worship God. It would be a shame that we come out of here and all we have done, we've read some scriptures and we've sang, we've danced a little and we've walked out here and God did not get any praise. We have to ensure when we're in the house of God that God gets His praise. Hallelujah. So no matter what we got to do to ensure God gets His praise, we got to do it. He is worthy. Certainly honored to be here today and to be before you. Stand here today in this service of thanksgiving I wonder if you just sing this song with me I love you I love you I love you Lord today take your time take your time because you care in such a special in way. In such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up. I lift you up. And I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. So tell him my heart, my mind. My heart, my mind, my soul, my soul belongs to you. You paid the price for me. Way back, way back on Calvary. That's why I praise, praise you. Yes, I do. I live. I live. 
one more time, one more time. My heart, my heart, my mind, my soul belongs to you. You paid the price for me. Way back. Before I do that, I need to make sure that everyone's in a good mood. I'm just searching out, making sure everybody's in a good mood. Everybody's got a smile on their face. It's Sunday the 13th of October and God has helped us to live, to see it. Yeah. So just look at the person next to you. You chose to sit next to them and if they're not smiling, just nudge them. nudge them good and if they still ain't taking no notice of you just get up you're in the wrong seat um, we are here today and we have sang and we have prayed etc before I go into the word and the children go for their ministries the youth go for their ministries um, I want to do something this morning and and we have some visitors here and some are visitors. Who is here for the very first time? Never been in this building before. Just put your hands up. Excellent. No, 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 stop. No, stop. If that was my first time and that was the reception I got, I'm not sure I'm coming back. Now, Bethel, you know better than that. This is their first time. Come on, let's give God thanks. We go, thanks for that. I am mindful, I am very mindful that on a Sunday, and I've said this before, on a Sunday growing up, the only place that was open was a petrol station. And that's, if you're lucky, it was a petrol station. And so if you were going out on a Sunday, it was either church or a petrol station. All right. Now you have shops. You have all kind of places open on a Sunday. So if someone takes time to be in the house of God, we need to give God thanks for them. Yes. So many other places they could have been today, but they chose to be here. Now it could be a special reason why they're here. It could be, but they're here anyhow. And those of you who live in town, and if you don't have your own church, you're certainly invited to make Bethel Ipswich your home church. Okay, if you have nowhere to go, and even if you don't know the Lord, if you keep on coming, you will get to know him. You will get to know him. You just keep on coming. So some things may seem a little strange today if it's your first time in church. But you know what? If you keep on coming, it's no longer strange. Things are only strange the first time. All right? But it is certainly my privilege today. A few months ago, if not over a year ago, a young man came to me and says, Pastor, I want to speak to you. And whenever somebody tells me they want to speak to me, I get free at the same time. 
I get frightened. Because it's like, what do you want to speak to me about? And a young man came to me. He says, Pastor, I've seen somebody I would like to get married to. But he didn't mention marriage at that time. It was somebody that I like. Now, I already told him I'm going to embarrass him today. So he, he, I'm going to embarrass him good. Because it's taken over a year to get to this point. I told him at the time, if you love the person, just go ahead, get married. No, I said, make sure they love you too. I did add that. <laughs> make sure they love you too. And throughout the months, um, between then and now, we have spoken on several occasions. And they've come today, and their family and friends have come to celebrate today their engagement. Now, I know you're all looking around, but it ain't me. No. So we're going to pray. Come on, ministers, just come over. And I'm going to ask Minister Clement, if you would just lead that prayer as we cover this couple. Father, in the name of Jesus. Well, Lord God, we bless your name this morning. Father, Lord God, even as we've heard this wonderful news, O oh God, my Savior, of the potential and future union, O oh God, of this wonderful couple. O oh God, we just pray right now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Even as your word has said, O oh God, that the husband should love his wife, O oh God, as Christ loves the church. And, O oh God, the wife should love her husband. And, Father, Lord God, for this reason, a man leaves his mother and father and cleaves to his wife. O oh God, he that finds a wife finds a good thing. O oh God, in the name of Jesus, cover them right now, Lord God, with your glory. Cover them with your love, O oh God. Cover them with your grace, O oh God, my Savior. Lord God, you know their hearts, you know their spirits. And we pray, O oh God, from now onward, Lord God, that you continue to lead them and guide them. O oh God, prepare for them, provide for them in the name of Jesus. O oh God, even as their families and their families spiritually, we're here all, O oh God, to witness, O oh God, my Savior, this engagement. We just pray, O oh God, that you help us to support them, O oh God. God, in everything that they do and say, Lord God. Father, allow your anointing to be upon this union in the name of Jesus, that they might be light, oh God, in the midst of darkness, that they might be salt, oh God, my Savior, that you give them strength, oh God, my Savior, continually. Bless them. Bless her womb, oh God, with many children, oh God. Bless them, oh God, my Savior, in every area of their lives. Provide housing provide land provide oh God my Savior all the things that they need materially spiritually naturally to the glory of your name have your way right now as we give you thanks in Jesus name hallelujah let us praise the Lord hallelujah amen amen put your hands together as we congratulate this couple on their engagement. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You deserve the glory and the honor. I lift my hands in worship as I praise your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor and the honor. I, 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 I lift my hands in worship and, and I bless your holy name. For you are great, you do miracles so great. Trees are getting ready. There, there is no one else like you. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. 
There is no one else like you. Beauties of the glory. Youth ministries. I pray. And I bless your holy name. You, you deserve, deserve the glory and the honor. I live my hands in worship. And I bless your holy name. For you, you are great. You do miracles. Preparing for the world. I wonder if we'll take our seats and the honor. I lift my hands. I lift my hands in worship. As I bless. And I praise your holy name. You deserve. You deserve the glory. Yes, you do, and the honor. Your One more time. You, you are great. Come on, tell him. You do miracles so great. There is no there is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You are great. You continue to pray for Brother Neil, Sister Abby, as they make their plans and they move forward, that God will always be at the center and God's will be done. Amen. Just for a few moments, literally, I want to turn your attention to the scripture that we looked at and read this morning found in the book of Isaiah chapter 55 we read from 1 through to 13 and I want to look at a couple of verses a few verses just to as I say every Sunday, just to encourage somebody, just to encourage you once again that God loves you. Yes, he does. The book of Isaiah 55 starts with a plea from our Lord for those who are lost to come home for those who have a need in their life 
to come home. In order to put some context on this, to come home, we would have had to have been at home in the first place, but left. So it was that when God created man, God created man to have communion with him, to have fellowship with him. But man chose to break off that fellowship with God, to break off that union that God had created. Man decided to do this, and we know the account fairly well of Adam and Eve and the serpent. But as time went on, God called a man by the name of Abraham, called him out from his kindred, from his people, and said that he will make he will make of him a nation. Make of him a people that he will call his own. Aren't you glad you are part of that today? So God, in his wisdom, called Abraham an idol worshiper, somebody who did not know God, somebody who did not care about God, but worshipped idols. His family worshipped idols. He came from a background of idol worshippers, and God said, I'm going to use you. Mm. So even when Abraham was not thinking about God, God was thinking about him. It's the same for us today, although we may not be thinking of God. God still has his eyes and his hands upon us. And he made a people from Abraham. He promised Abraham, let me say it this way. He made a covenant with Abraham. And he made a covenant with Isaac and with Jacob. That he will be their God and they will be his people. God gave them the way that he wanted them to live. You know about the Ten Commandments, but God also added some laws, some other laws that would separate them from the evil ones, those who did not know God. And you know the account very well that there was a man called Jacob who'd have 12 sons. And from those 12 came the tribes of Israel. Israel as a nation. They, as time went on, forgot what God had done. And how is it the same for us today that we seek God when we need something, and after God has provided it, we forget the same God that provided the need that we had. History just repeating itself. I'm giving you a little background to how we got to 55 in Isaiah. So then from this nation that God said that I will give you a land that was not yours. I am giving you a land flowing with milk and honey. I am giving you the victory over your enemies. I am going to fight your battles for you. But you must remember me. So all of what God promised was conditional. That yes, I will do all of these things for you, but you must keep my commandments. And one of the biggest things that God disliked with the nation of Israel was their worship of other gods. The worship of idols or other gods, God disliked or can I say hated. Because he said clearly in his word, you shall have no other God 
beside me. In other words, I am the almighty God. I am the only God. And I am the one that you ought to serve. But Israel as a nation did differently. And God said, all right, I have had enough of this cycle that when you need me, you call on me, I hear your cry, I answer your cry, I defeat your enemies, I provide for you, but soon afterwards, you forget what I have done. And so the cycle went that after you forget and you fall into trouble, you call on me and yes, I've heard you. But there came a time when God said, enough is enough. I am going to put you in captivity for 70 years. And I'll tell you, no matter what anybody did, the 70 years was going, always going to be 70 years. Oh yeah, you can cry out in year 60, but there's still 10 more years to go. In year 69, Lord, is the time up yet? No, you still got another year to go. So now, God, although He punished His people, as He had promised to do, He did not leave them there. So we kind of get to where we are today in this scripture. That those who are thirsty, those who want to come back to God, there is a route back. Those who have drifted far from God, there is a route back. 55 and 1, ho everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters, and he that hath no money, come and buy and come and eat. Look at the God we serve. That although we had treated him so badly, he says, whatever you need, I am going to provide it for you. But you've got to come. Why do you spend your money when you don't need to? I have punished you. Yes, I've punished you. But I'm not leaving you in that state. The love that God has for his people goes beyond what we have done for him. Because one day on a cross, he sent his son Jesus to redeem us who were lost. Dead in our trespasses and sin. That yes, while we were yet sinners, he died for us. He says, wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread? And your labor for that which satisfy not. What does he say? Hearken diligently unto me and eat that which is good and let your soul delight itself in fatness. God's offer of salvation. Offering a way out. Of where we are. No, it doesn't matter how far we have gone. God is offering a way out. He says, incline your ear and come unto me. Hear and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Yes, he made a covenant with David. And that covenant was fulfilled in his son, Jesus Christ. That he will be our God and we will be his people. God is calling us today. He's asking us to incline our ear. In other words, listen what he is saying and come and our soul shall live. Now, this is what I love about God. He gives us a choice. 
He says, come and your soul shall live. But if we don't come, our soul will die. But the choice is ours. I will soon get to the verse I want to get to. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that knoweth not. And nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee because the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, he hath glorified thee. In other words, that because of the God in you, because of what God has done, because of the way that God has turned your life around, someone's going to ask you, how is it you don't do the things you used to do? How come you don't speak the way that you used to speak? How come you don't walk the way that you used to walk? You just got to tell somebody is because Christ has made a difference in my life. But look at this. He says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. So seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. While he may be found. That means that there will come a time when we will call on him. And he won't be there. We will call on him and he won't answer. So we must seek him. Look for him while he may be found. Now look at this. It is a fact that God does not move. It is us who draws ourselves away from him. It's us who pull away from God. How do I know that? Look at the parable that Jesus gave us of the prodigal son. The son left home. And the father stayed at home. Waiting for the son to come back. God is crying to somebody today, speaking into somebody's heart and saying it's time to come home. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. In other words, put away. Put away where you're at right now. If you know that you're not saved, you know that you're not living right, you know there's something that you need to put away, God is saying, do that now while he may be found. What is he asking? Let him return unto the Lord. And look at this. And he will have mercy upon him. So to the verse I want to get to. For my thoughts. And not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. So here we are today, where we will treat people, this is generalizing, it certainly isn't everybody, we will treat people how they treat us. But those that have been washed in the blood, we don't follow that. We will treat people as God would want us to treat people. The way that we live will not be according to the way that we think. It will be according to the way that God leads us. Because we have returned. What does a returned soul look like? A returned soul is going to think like Jesus would think. The situations that we would find ourselves in. Yes, and even as Christians, we find ourselves in some sticky situations. That if we're not careful, 
We will remember what we were like when we were apart from God. We will remember the things that we would have said. But because Christ has made a difference in our lives, we are now talking differently. We are now behaving differently. That's why it's such a shame when people who are called by the name of God, when they open their mouths, it does not portray somebody that is called by the name of God. When they, you see their behavior, the way they're treating people, you recognize that no, they have not come home yet. They may be on their way home, but they have not returned to God. God is calling us to be like Him. If we are returned or returned people, if we are a people that have changed and have come back to God, God is expecting to see something different. God is expecting us to think like Him. His thoughts, our thoughts, are not His thoughts. The way that we think without Him will be dangerous thoughts. The way that we behave without Him will be dangerous ways. God says that whatever he speaks, it will not return unto him void. It's going to accomplish what it was sent forth to accomplish. Look at this, that we will promise everything just to get out of trouble. Oh yes, people will promise you anything when they want something from you. But once they've got it, the promise does not hold true. But that's different with God. And so it should be different with God's people. That our yea should be nay. Yea, and our nay should be nay. So here we are today. Because of time, I'm saying that God is calling us back into the fold. He is calling us because we have strayed. And he says, if you're thirsty, come and drink. If you're hungry, come and eat. Don't worry about what has happened in the past. Don't worry about where you've been and what you've done. God's love is able and is here to cover you. You may not even know about Christ. You may have never heard the message of his love, of his mercy. But today I'm saying to somebody, God loves you. He loves you so much that his mercies are great. His grace and his favor is stretching out. While the altar workers are getting ready, I want to invite somebody today that God, as he speaks to you and tells you that his ways are not your ways. Your thoughts are not his thoughts. So as much as you want to blame yourself for everything, God's not thinking that way. As much as you want to feel that you are down and that you are out and nobody cares, God is not thinking that way. No, he's saying, come on home. Saying, come on back to the fold. You may wonder what people are going to say, but people have been talking since time started. People have been talking for a very long time. But it's time for us to shut out the noise. It's time for us to put things to one side and say, I'm coming home. Lord, I'm coming home. I've stayed away too long. So I'm inviting you now. Won't you come? It's not about what people think. God is thinking totally different. He's saying, come home. 
He's saying this one is for you. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. So won't you come? You don't know the Lord. You don't know him. You have never given your life to him. I want you to come now while we pray. And then for another set of people, you have known him. You have been baptized. But somehow the enemy has gotten in and you have strayed. God is saying now you need to come home. And don't worry about where you've been. Come home. Come home. Coming home. Lord, I'm coming home. I've stayed away too long. I want you to come. I want you to come in faith. Come on. God is speaking to you. Come on. I want to be, God bless you as you're coming. I want to be where you are. God bless you. God bless you as you're coming. Coming home. Coming home. Lord, I'm coming home. Lord, I'm coming home. I've stayed away. I've stayed away too long. God bless you. God bless you as you're still coming. I am coming home. Lord, I'm coming home. Lord, I'm coming home. I want to be where you are. I, I want, want to, to be, be where, where you are. Coming home, coming home, Lord. Coming home. Hallelujah, Lord, I'm coming home. Lord, I'm coming home. Come on, you have strayed, you have strayed. I've stayed away too long. God is calling you, come on. Won't you come? Come on, come on. Home. In faith, come in faith. Come on. Lord, Lord I'm, I'm coming. coming home. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I, I want, want to be, be where, where you are. are. Minister Susan, I'm coming home. Coming home. Lord, 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 Lord. Lord, I'm coming home. Come on, I've stayed away. I've stayed away.
coming home. wanted to come but you didn't come forward I want you to know that even in your seat God will speak to you God will minister to you and God will meet your need even while you're sitting in your seat he knows your heart and in your heart, you've just got to say, God, I want to come home while I can still come home. I am going to think more like you because God's thoughts is saying, come home. Whereas the enemy will say, stay away. And will give you all the reasons why you should stay away. But for those that came forward and for those that are still yet in your seats, I want you to know that God's arms are stretched open wide and saying, come home. Come home. I wonder if you're able to stand in the building as we close. Minister Clement is gone. Minister Clement, I want you to just close us off in prayer at this time. Praying for those that still need to come home. Church, we've heard the word of God this morning. And let us just keep our eyes and our spirits connected to what's been said. We're going to pray, Father, in Jesus' name. As we pray, Lord God, we pray right now, Lord God, that we will, Lord God, acknowledge your words that's been spoken today. You said that your word will not return unto you void, but it will accomplish, O oh God, what you said it to do. Father, allow your word, O oh God, to fall upon good ground this morning. 
Oh God, all those that have heard your word, oh God, help us to realize that tomorrow is not promised to any of us. Help us to realize, oh God, my Savior Lord, that the thing that matters, oh God, is not the money in the bank and the houses and the cars, but to realize, oh God, that we have a soul to save, to be saved. Father, in the name of Jesus, we see what's going on throughout the world and we see, oh God, that this world is a sinking ship but Lord God we thank you Lord God that you provided us a lifeboat and that lifeboat is Jesus Christ and we thank you dear God my Savior Lord although we don't deserve your grace although we don't deserve your love although God must say we deserve to be on that cross because you said that the wages of sin is death oh God you said that death should be have its penalty but Lord God we thank you that you took our place, that you died in our place, oh God. And for that very reason, oh God, we lift up our hearts and I lift up our hands to glorify you and thank you that you died in our place, oh God. We worship you, Lord God, that you gave us grace, oh God, to continue and to go forward. Lord God, we thank you again for my brothers and sisters, oh God, this morning, that we could unite together to worship you, Lord God, to glorify your name and to celebrate, oh God, my Savior, in Abby and Brother Neil's engagement. We thank you for the parents. We thank you for the relatives. We thank you, Lord God, my Savior, Lord, for mother and sister, oh God, uh, uh, um, Lainey, oh God, uh, uh, Brother Neil's parents. We pray Pray for them right now also, Lord God. And even as they all go back to their several places of abode, both near and far, we pray you protect them, oh God, and keep them in your care. Have your way today, Lord God, as we leave all things in your capable hands. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. God bless you as we close. As we close, we thank God for everything that's been said and done. And if you have been blessed, I wonder if you just tell somebody, I've been blessed today. Come on, tell somebody, if you have been blessed, if you have had a good time today, tell them you've had a good time. I want to close out today. I want to close out today and... Thank you all once again, like I said, for coming as their children are coming back. Hear the blessed Savior calling the oppressed. All ye every lay done, come to me and rest. Come no longer tarry, I your load will bear. Bring me every burden, bring me every care. Oh, come, oh, come unto me. Oh, and I.
I trust my mind. 